the day of Pentecost was fully come. They're all one mind and one accord. And suddenly there came from heaven the sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That came to the upper room, but it didn't stay in the upper room because they staggered out under the streets speaking in tongues and magnifying God in languages they had never learned. And at least 16 languages are named there that they were praising God and speaking the mighty works of God. And it arrested enough people that 3,000 of that crowd got saved. And it has never stopped. It has never abated. It is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that will believe it. Welcome to the Voice of Triumph with Roger R. Woodard, Senior Pastor of Family Worship Center located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Pastor Woodard's ministry is reaching a hurting world with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Now, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, here is Pastor Roger R. Woodard. I've worshiped in brush armors. I've worshiped under trees. I've worshiped in storefronts without floors. Matter of fact, in Las Vegas, my dad, there we didn't have Sunday school rooms, so they taught us in the car. Teachers taught from the front seat. We kids sat on the back seat. No, to answer your question, there weren't that many of us. I've worshiped under tents with chairs, slatted pews with the nails working out, and you'd rip your trousers or your your ladies would rip the the hose. I've worshiped when we had one old upright piano. It didn't matter. Nobody could play it anyway. And I've worshiped in places like this. And then I've gone into some of those great cathedrals of Europe, and you're awestruck. Some of those great houses of worship in Europe where I'm sure preachers used to thunder with the word of God are nothing now but museum pieces where God used to do things. You say, well, we're not like that. No, just drive around your community in Cleveland and Gaston County and see the places where God used to do great things and they're just as cold as a mausoleum. Monuments to where God was moving, what God did do. I'm not going to let it happen under my watch here. This is not going to be just a place where God used to move and God used to do things. And if I have to make people so uncomfortable, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be obnoxious. That's just a gift. And Jesus said... Not the place, it's not your ritual, it's not your religious exercise. He said, here's what Jesus said, and he's a good authority. The time is come, and now is. True worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the, get it, for the Father is seeking someone to do that, to worship him, not just in spirit, not just wild emotional fanaticism, not just in truth, because a lot of people will kill you over truth, but they're dead themselves because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But true worshipers worship with that balance of truth and spirit. And if that's how true worshipers must Worship, what kind of worship is being offered by those who don't? Well, it must not be true worship. Our doctrine states, you say, well, I don't, I don't sign on for that. Well, let me just clue you in. The Church of God doctrine states that we believe that speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance is the first evidence of a spirit-filled life. You say, I don't believe that. You can find plenty of churches that don't. But we believe, and I hold to it with all of my heart, that when you are filled with the Spirit, you will speak with tongues. 
We teach that. We espouse that. I hold to it without compromise. We teach that the gifts of the Spirit enumerated in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10, are alive and well and validated in the life of the believer and the life of the church today. They did not die away with the last apostles. They are still active. They've always been active in every century since Pentecost. Oh, yes, they've been disdained like many disdain them today, but they've always been present for the hungry. We believe in the fruit of the Spirit. Not that tongues is the only evidence. Spirit-filled people exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 through 24, we believe what the Word of God says that in this last days in Acts 2, 19 and Mark 16, 7 through 18, that signs and wonders will follow believers today. All right. We believe what Joel 2.28 says that Peter reiterates in Acts chapter 2, 17 and 18. Hear me, that in the last days your sons and daughters, for you chauvinists, shall, shall. That is an imperative word. It's not ought to, could, may be able. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, it says. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaidens, I'll pour out my spirit. Listen, and they shall prophesy. Do you hear the imperatives in this? And yet, why then would we dare run away from this? Paul writes when he's speaking on the gifts. Somebody said, well, you know, love, love's all we need because uh, love has replaced all of those. Then why did he say covet these gifts? Why does he say earnestly pursue these gifts? Me? You? Why are we ignoring this? I'll tell you why. I thought we might have a little better reaction I'm getting, but still, word is the word. I'll tell you exactly why. We have become spiritually lazy, and we have become more religious than we want to admit. We've even forgotten why we come to church. Buckle your seatbelt. I'm just beginning to get going here. Why are you here? All around the world, people are congregating in Christian churches. Why? Is it more of a tradition, just something my family's always done? Or just for the fellowship and, you know, to be connected? It is supposed to be, it is supposed to be, and this is going in one ear and out the other, you better plug up one. This is supposed to be a time when we set aside everything and dedicate this time to praise, honor, magnify, lift high the name of our Savior with people of like precious faith. Because when he is lifted up, he draws all men unto him. And as we collectively come into his presence, lift up holy hands, begin to call on the name of the one who loved us and gave himself for us. And in a world that uses his name to swear by and belittles his name and mock him on every turn, we, his people, the sheep of his pasture, exalt that name and lift it high because he is holy and pure and worthy. And in that environment, miracles take place. We are recharged. We're given overcoming victory and power to go out and take hell on face to face. 
Because friend, like it or not, hell will be in your face. And you can gut it out, deal with it in the flesh till you're worn out and your nerves are afraid. And you know what you're going to do? Or you can get your batteries recharged in the spirit and realize what you were singing about a while ago. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now, and y'all get that ready. I ain't ready for it yet, but I want it to be ready. <laughs> That's because that song melts me anyhow. Why? Why should our sons and daughters, why should our sons and daughters not be prophesying? If the word says they shall. And all us old men that think it's over for us. Why should we not be dreaming bigger dreams when the word said we'd be do it? Young men, why aren't you seeing visions given to you of the spirit when the word says you shall? Why would we do that? Because the spirit has been poured out. It's already been poured out. He isn't going to pour it out. He's poured it out. The same Holy Ghost that did all those wonders in your scripture is the same Holy Ghost moving in you and me today. Oh, would to God we would believe it and start running with it. I'll tell you something happened at Azusa Street. Jewish men went there to disrupt the revival. And he went to discredit. 12-year-old girl met him at the door speaking in tongues. He turned and ran. He came back later and gave his heart to Christ. And what he testified, he said, I came here to disrupt this meeting. And that little girl came and spoke to me in perfect Hebrew, told me my name, where I lived, and what I'd come to do, and not to put my hand against it, because this was the hand of God. 12 years old. And I'll tell you a negative. A friend of mine, pastor of a church in Gary, Indiana, he had one of his elders that was living ungodly and, and, and being disruptive. And the heavy presence of the Holy Ghost moved in the service, heavy blanket of conviction. And this one man wouldn't move. His little daughter came to him speaking in tongues. She's, I think, six or eight years old. Begging with her daddy to repent before the Lord. And he was able to resist her. That week was killed in a car wreck. We're, we better understand who we're dealing with. Our God is a consuming fire. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And this powerful spirit of God that works in us and moves in us to bring us along to the place where God wants us to be we cooperate it for our benefit and we resist to our peril. And I've got to keep moving. We must have this power if we are what we claim to be. We have to pursue hungrily and thirstily, pursue hard after God. And a lot of us are just not there. The Holy Ghost will engage us. Hear what he promises in Jeremiah 29, verse 12. Then you shall call upon me, you shall go and pray under me, and I'll hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, says the Lord. I'll be found of you. Tommy Tenney wrote the book several years ago, God Chasers. 
stirred up a lot of people. But the great thing to know about chasing God is that God wants you to catch him. He can be caught. Jacob wrestling with that angel all night long. That angel could have gotten away at any time that angel wanted to. But he wanted Jacob to wrestle. And he wanted Jacob to prevail. So Jacob walked away the next morning limping for the rest of his life. But he was no longer Jacob. Now he's Israel. You've wrestled with God and you've won. He wants you to have fun. He doesn't mind your recreation. Does it, does it consume you? Some, some people, men and women, are workaholics. And they tell themselves they've they got to make enough. They have never come to the place where they realize God knows what you need and he's promised to provide it if you'll seek the kingdom first. And I wish that one wasn't in the Bible, I guess. He will engage you. He'll be found in you. I'm coming to a close. He will enable you. I can't do it. Duh. Think God might know that. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask above your wildest imagination. God, let at least somebody grab this. Uh, I know we've got wild imaginations, but our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above your wildest But watch it. According to the power that works in us. Woo! God didn't choose to do this work through angels. He, cho he chose to do it through earthen vessels who were weak and frail. And he tells us why he does it. That the excellency of the work could be done only to his glory. Why did he send the majority of Gideon's army home? Why did he say, march around the city seven times, the seventh day, seven times, and then shout, I'll give you the victory. Why did he choose a shepherd boy to kill a giant? So nobody could glory. No flesh could glory in his presence. All he needs is for you to be hungry for him. Make yourself available to him. He will work through you to bring the victory. And then when you come dragging Goliath's head back to your tent, and everybody's looking at you wide-eyed, wow. You'll say, not me. <laughs> not me. Some of you got some big giants. You came in the room with some big giants. They're real. The last thing you need is some hooper, duper, scooper, whooper, spiritual guru. Just have faith, brother. Just have faith, sister. You know, name it and claim it. Just refuse to have it. Just, I'm not going to have it. Go away. It's easy for you to tell me you have faith when you're not hurting. It's easy for you to tell me you have faith when all your bills are paid and I don't know where my next payment's coming from. It's easy for you to tell me some stupid stuff like that when it's my loved one laying in the coffin and not yours. When I'm facing death because of heart disease and cancer, you say, brother, what are you? you're just being real negative. No, I'm being very real. Because sometimes what we think is the right things to say is insulting.
tell me I've served God all of these years and I don't have faith? But every person's faith is tested when those giants rise up. You don't feel like speaking in tongues. You don't feel like running. You don't feel like jumping. It's when you do have to do some soul searching and reach down inside. And not because you're emotional or you're just a hooper, duper, scooper, whooper. You just say, you know, I'm going to believe God anyway. The Holy Ghost will enable us and I'm finally stand with me. He will empower you. Jesus told the disciples, Luke 24, 49, Terry in Jerusalem, do you be endued, clothed with power from on high? Not your power. Power from on high. We know the, the Pentecostal. Stand by Acts 1, 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But power for what? Power to be witnesses. Power to take the word to the whole world and make disciples of all people. Let me close this message with what you already know, but wash your ears out with it again. You could quote it. I probably could too. For God so loved the world that he, be, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, 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 the Muslim, the native in Africa, the Asian of China, the Indians of India, the Wall Street broker, presidents and prime ministers and generals and admirals, governors, legislators, the homeless man living in the gutter of LA, Chicago, Nolens, New York, and anywhere on the social strata or shade of color in between, whosoever. Just believe on him. Whosoever believes on him should have everlasting life. I love it. That's the heart of the gospel. But go on, take in the next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's why you must be born again, because there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So you could be a religious person, Buddha, Christian, or your own, me and Jesus got it all worked out. No, that ain't the way it works one way and the world needs to hear it because much of the world has never heard it and that's why we're given power you say well I'm not called to Africa India Asia no he didn't say that either did he he said I'm going to give you power to be my witness at home don't even try to go to the world start at home around your door how many of your family members haven't heard? How many of your, the people you work with that you'll clock in on the job in the morning have never had your witness? Are you not talking to me? Okay, I'm not talking to you. Who am I talking to? Because I'm talking to somebody. God never called you to be timid and retiring when it comes to who you are. You're not a mechanic. You're a blood-bought, spirit-filled, sanctified child of God, cleverly disguised as a mechanic. You're not a secretary, office worker. You're not a factory worker, assembly line worker. You're not a carpenter. No, no, no. You are a born-again, spirit-filled child of the living God, cleverly disguised as that to be a witness on an unsuspecting world view around you. And you can be an overcoming devil chasing sin killing child of the living God. 
You. He said, but you don't understand, Pastor. How everybody looks at me. Briefly, I know I've got you standing and I apologize. When God called me to preach, I was such a pathetic little punk. And I was. And I remained a pathetic punk for a lot of years. But I was called. In a community where about 12 other young men, all of them older than me, said they were called to preach, I was ridiculed. Not believed by my mother or my father. They didn't ridicule me. They just thought I was a crazy little kid. I don't blame them looking back on it. My uncle belittled me, insulted me. The community ignored me. If they had put it in my yearbook, it would have said, most unlikely to succeed. But they didn't know what God had done in my heart. I stumbled around. Oh, God help me. I messed up so much. One thing the devil was never able to do was steal that desire. Looking up after failing miserably, he didn't steal that desire. I'm here today because I got up, crawled back up to the altar, said, Master, it's me. I ain't going nowhere because there's no place to go. Once you know who he is, there's no other place to go. So you bring your broken pieces. God will never give up on you. Somebody needs this. I don't know who. God will never give up on you. You're telling me I can't backslide? Now, did I say that? I said God will never give up on you. If you don't give up on him. Yeah, but I've, I've failed him many times. Not a person in this room that served God very long hasn't failed him many times in many ways. But he didn't give up on you. No matter how much condemnation was heaped upon you, no matter how low you had fallen, when you opened up your heart to him, you found that he abundantly pardons. Oh, people don't always let you forget, but he forgives and forgets and restores. Somebody needs what I'm saying. Come get it. Come get what you need right now. I ain't back. It's all I've got. Thank you for joining us today for Voice of Triumph. We invite you to check out our website at www.familyworship.org. There you will find information on our church service times, special events, purchase our books and music, and also information on becoming a partner as we continue to take the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. If you'd like to write us concerning our program, our address is The Voice of Triumph, P.O. Box 396, Kings Mountain, 28086, USA. On behalf of Pastor Woodard and the entire Family Worship Center team, God bless you and we'll see you next week.